why don't we kick things off by starting with our first new playable character for version 3.5, Dia! Woo! Starting with Dia, let's go! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's taken a while, but she is finally here. That's right. Topics. In her story quest, Manticora chapter, the Traveler and Dia work to solve some trouble Dia's mercenary group is facing. Okay, so event wishes for version 3.5. In the early part of the new version, both Dia and Sino will be available with their own event wishes. Oh, and uh, as a reminder to our travelers out there, Dia will not be an event exclusive character. After the version 3.6 update, which to be clear is the one after this upcoming 3.5 update, she will become available in the standard wish. And as for weapons, the five star claymore Beacon of the Reed Sea ooh, will be available in the version 3.5 weapon event wish. Ooh. I know. Oh, oh, and um, Faruzan's very own hangout quest will also be added in version 3.5. In version 3.5, travelers can also expect an all new Archon quest titled Kari Bear, which will continue our story as we search for our sibling. In this quest, travelers will not only meet Kaya in Sumeru, but will also be joined once again by our mysterious friend, Dainsliff. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Okay, you guys ready? Cause we finally made it to Mika. Woohoo! I'm not sure if everyone remembers this young member rising through the ranks of the Knights of Avonius, but we have seen him before. Yeah. Travelers can expect to see Kamisato Ayaka and Shunha returning with rerun event wishes alongside Mika. So if you'd like to add Mika to your team, then you definitely won't want to miss this. Great. Next, we'll be covering the events coming our way in version 3.5. As you can see, the main event will be the Windbloom Festival. Uh Kale, who's now been cured of Elazar, will once again make her way to this nation of freedom during this romantic and colorful festival. Aw, I wanna oh, go. Cool, excited to see her. Ah, well, it gets spicier because accompanying her for the trip is Tainari and Sino. Ooh, Sweet. interesting. It feels unusual to see them all come to Mondstadt. Right? It's like all our friends from Sumeru took a field trip. Kale will be playing an important role in this storyline and upon arriving in Mondstadt, she finds a mysterious prophecy in a book. They must complete the four pieces of the prophecy in order to light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. By the way, did you two notice Tamea standing in the background there? And there's a girl with him! Nice catch! How did you notice him? He's got such NPC vibes, just kidding. Uh, yes, Timaeus will be playing an important role in this event, other than standing too close to the crafting table. Uh, but as for who the girl standing next to him is, we'll have to play through the story and see. Ooh! There'll be three available game modes, Floral Pursuit, Ballads of Breeze, and Breezy Snapshots. Yes! Awesome! Ooh! <laughs> Ooh is correct! In Floral Pursuit, travelers will need to continuously collect bloom balloons to increase their score. After collecting a set amount of balloons, the next area will unlock, and once you've collected a specific number of bloom balloons in the final area, a ring of pursuit will appear. Touch the ring to leave the area and complete the challenge. And in each area, travelers will also encounter airsots balloons that pursue you. If you're caught by an airsots balloon, you will lose one pursuit point and be returned to the start point of that area. Ooh. Mm, scary. So we'll probably need to uh, avoid those. And the travelers will be able to enjoy floral pursuit in single player mode or tackle challenges along with their friends in co-op mode. Wow, looks like that'll be fun. What's next? Well, let me ask you, Amber, do you like rhythm games? <gasps> yes. I, th I, thought, I thought you would because the next thing is a rhythm game. <laughs> it's called Ballads of Breeze. This time, travelers will be able to choose from three different instruments and use their instrument of choice to play through the song challenges. Nice! And will that actually affect the sound they hear in the game mode? Yep, the instrument they hold and play will be different. Ah, cool, I see. And finally, we have Breezy Snapshots, which will have travelers once again making use of their trusty camera. Travelers will be given photography targets and will need to travel to the corresponding locations to snap some photos and receive rewards. Click, click, just for my photo album. <laughs> Beautiful. 
During the Windbloom Festival event, travelers will have the chance to obtain an exclusive 4-star Claymore weapon called Mailed Flower. Next, we have another event also taking place in Mondstadt called Spices from the West Northerly Search. That's right! I'm after we start creating the seasoning, we'll need to add the ingredients to the pot in the right order by hitting the button as the needle points to the corresponding ingredient. That's gonna destroy my whole brain. However, we have a limited amount of attempts, so we need to add all the required ingredients with as few mistakes as possible. Oh no. More seasoning recipes will gradually unlock throughout the event period. Travelers can add their completed seasonings to delicious dishes to obtain fragrant dishes. We can also invite characters to taste test the fragrant dishes in the Serena Teapot to increase their companionship experience. After they taste a dish, we can hear their responses, which will vary based on the character's personal preferences. Keep discussion alive and the competition fresh in everyone's minds, the organizers have put together a new event to spread the word. They purchased the rights to Theater Mechanicus in Sumeru and incorporated some fungi elements to design a completely new game called Fungus Mechanicus. Hmm, seems they're putting a lot of effort into promoting the competition. That's right. So what'll the rules be like for this event? I'm gonna tell ya. In Fungus Mechanicus, we will be controlling pieces that look like fungi, <laughs> aptly named Little Fungi. <coughs> Our enemies will be Mechanicai, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. The Little Fungi will automatically attack the nearest Mechanicai, and travelers will be able to select the Little Fungi and control their movement or order them to attack a specific target. During the challenge, we'll need to command our fungi and defeat all the mechanic guy to clear the stage and receive rewards. Hey, we By using Marvelous Jelly, we can let our little fungi unleash their skills. Using these skills at the right moment is the key to achieving victory. Marvelous Jelly will be gradually restored over time, and Plaudatory Protection will randomly appear during the challenge, granting an additional amount of jelly. Looks like we'll need some strategy. Like, you have to plan out every move. Of your betrayal? <laughs> <laughs> some familiar friends from the Beast Tamers tournament will be making an appearance, too. Oh, do you guys remember uh, Bongo Head and Twirly Whirly? Yeah. Travelers can feed their fungi marvelous jelly to interact with them, too. Ooh. In addition to these events in Mondstadt and Sumeru, the upcoming version will also include the Vibro Crystal Verification Challenge event. An engineer from Fontaine has arrived at the outskirts of the chasm to study the harmonic motion between gems known as vibrocrystals and collect data in an effort to clear the name of his colleague. In this event, travelers can connect transmitter and receiver crystals and attempt to produce various effects that will allow you to defeat your foes with ease. Score points during the challenge and you will be awarded medals based on the score and receive the corresponding rewards. Whoa, okay. So there's a lot going on here with the crystals and effects. Can you give us more details? Sure thing. I know it might sound a little complicated at first, but honestly, it's not too tough once you get the hang of it. The various effects are basically buff effects that we can receive during the challenge. And these effects are triggered by combining transmitter and receiver crystals. Transmitter crystals are the conditions for triggering the buff effect and receiver crystals are the buff effect that occurs once those conditions are met. Oh, okay, I think I got it. Yep, yep, yep. And to conduct the experiments, travelers will need to assemble two teams of characters, as well as the corresponding vibrocrystal harmonic schema. Travelers will then carry out two rounds of combat, and for our newer players out there, there's no need to worry. The event will also provide trial characters to assist everyone in completing the challenge. Oh, Ooh. nice. It looks like this event will also be awarding different tiers of medals. In addition to the events we've already mentioned, version 3.5 will also be featuring the classic Leyline Overflow event, which will give travelers the chance to stock up on character experience books and Mora. In version 3.5, a limited time heated battle mode will be available in Genius Invocation TCG which will feature some special rules. Nice! So, what are we looking at here? Basically, this mode will be all about reducing the cost of elemental dice. So, the number of elemental dice required to play the first card from your hand every round will be reduced by two. Also, the number of elemental dice required to use the first character skill each round will be reduced by one. Okay. Yeah, from the sound of it, the pace of the game will be much faster. Yeah, I like it. 
I hope all our Genius Invocation fans will enjoy it. Last but not least, we have a system-related update. Uh, I think you'll like this one. After the version 3.5 update, the game will be adding additional rewards for completing Archon Quests. Upon completing each Archon Quest, travelers will receive one Intertwined Fate, along with a variety of other rewards. Once the update is complete, travelers can view the tour guide feature in the Adventurer's Handbook to claim the corresponding rewards. Yay! More Intertwined Fate! 